universe reborn endlessly and new model of the cosmos. It could be a time-honored philosophy of Eastern gurus, the view that time has neither a beginning nor an end, and that the universe is locked in a perpetual cycle of formation and dissipation. This new cyclic model of the universe offers an appealing alternative to the prevailing theory. It predicts all the features of the standard model using fewer ingredients. In the most widely accepted cosmological model called the inflationary model, the universe is born in an instantaneous creation of matter and energy known as the Big Bang. So, as the universe has inflated since that event, matter and energy has spread out in clumps. The spreading could potentially continue forever. And now, ring-like patterns in the sky could be ghostly imprints of a universe that existed before the Big Bang, according to a controversial new study. If the theory is correct, the cosmic rings may be the first real-world evidence, but our current universe is just the latest in an endless string of recycled universes, the study authors say. Astronomers found the circular patterns in a new analysis of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is the radiation left over from the Big Bang that now permeates the universe. Within the newly described rings, many of which are nested like ripples in a pond, the temperature is more uniform than elsewhere in the CMB sky. One possible explanation for these rings is that they were created black holes collided in a previous universe. According to Roger Penrose of the University of Oxford in the UK, scientists think that when two black holes crash together, they emit ripples of energy known as gravitational waves. The more massive the colliding black holes, the more numerous and powerful the waves. Gravitational waves distort the fabric of space-time and the waves can leave imprints of their passage in the form of ring-like patterns. Our universe is one in a series of reborn universes. This would mean that the rings survived our Big Bang and now allow us to see through the Big Bang into the previous aeon. If the concept of patterns surviving a Big Bang event sounds far-fetched, don't worry, even other astrophysicists find it hard to believe, although it is possible. So then, does the universe get recycled? The new study or paper published on the Cornell University website, arxiv.org, is the latest piece in a model of a cyclic universe that Penrose has developed over several years. According to his theory, the Big Bang that created our universe is not unique at least one earlier Big Bang has occurred, giving rise to a universe that existed before ours. Countless more universes could have existed before that one, he thinks. Penrose calls each cycle of the universe an aeon, and each aeon lasts for an unimaginably long time, much longer than the age of the current universe, which is already 13.7 billion years old. An aeon starts with a big bang, and over time the newborn universe evolves from a sea of dilute and homogeneous particles into ever more complex structures such as galaxies, stars, planets, and life. All the while the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate, presumably stretched apart by the same mysterious dark energy is driving the expansion of space-time in our current universe. Inevitably, however, all the matter in the universe is ingested by the supermassive black holes that lurk in the hearts of large galaxies, such as the one in our own Milky Way, according to Penrose's theory. These black holes grow as they feed, colliding and combining into even larger black holes. The gravitational waves created by these black hole collisions are what drive the CMB rings, the theory goes. So eventually, the monster black holes consume matter until nothing is left. Another 
physicist, proposed in the 1970s that when black holes stop taking in matter, they lose mass via radiation, with smaller black holes losing mass faster than larger ones. Based on that theory, over billions more years, the remaining black holes would evaporate, converting their ingested matter into radiation. At this point in the aeon, the universe, now old and large beyond imagining, is once again a sea of uniform particles. Penrose theorizes that the universe then undergoes a transformation that essentially compacts it back into an infinitesimally small point, setting the stage for the next Big Bang. According to this theory, everything that is big becomes small, and everything cold becomes hot, so that the ancient universe, which is big and cold, becomes dense and hot. The model doesn't explain what drives this transformation, though. So, in principle, it works on paper, but still missing details and quantitative predictions. The inflationary theory says that the early universe went through a period of hyper-expansion that helped it reach its current size and shape. Inflation helped solve a number of problems with the Big Bang Theory, some of which were revealed by studies of the CMB. For example, one potentially puzzling aspect of our universe is that it appears to be homogeneous. That is, when viewed on the large scale of galaxy clusters, different parts of the universe look essentially the same. Inflation explains the universe's uniformity because any clumping of matter in the early universe was smoothed out by hyper-expansion. However, according to Penrose, if an earlier universe existed before our own, and that universe expanded at an accelerated rate, the same way ours is doing now, inflation is not needed. The idea is that the accelerated expansion in the previous aeon smoothed the universe out and that takes the place of inflation in the standard picture. So, in other words, time really never ends. God is eternal. Genesis chapter 1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 4. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 7. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. 10. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. 12. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for the signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, 
He made the stars also seventeen. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth eighteen. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Nineteen. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Twenty. And God said that the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and birds that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Twenty-one. And God created great whales and every living creature that moves which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged bird after his kind. And God saw that it was good. 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply in the earth. 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Yes, everything is connected, and everything is numbered. The Creator created heaven and earth, and all these are more signs of the end times, transition days, which is a continuing day-by-day -day process happening all around the world and in the universe.